Well, good evening. I'm your host, Robert Wilson, with Cowboy Wisdom Hypnoacuity and Cowboy Wisdom Podcast. And tonight is presenting Understanding Labor Day. And what that is, is we all think Labor Day is about barbecues and stuff like that, but Labor Day and Veterans Day are probably the two most unappreciated days in our in our country. Because Labor Day is about uh, people that lost their lives uh, in the labor movement in the early 19, uh, 1900s. And it was about people getting away from uh, all the unsafe working conditions, low wages, and things like that. But Labor Day is a federal holiday in the United States celebrated on the first Monday of September to honor and recognize the American labor movement and and the works and contribution of laborers to the development and achievement of the in the United States. And what that's all about is as people we used to have child labor in some very, very unsavory working conditions. And with the this is kind of the beginning of the union labor movement. I was a union electrician for 36 years. This day means a lot to me. But, you know, everybody dislikes a union because that come a lot from the media rhetoric and people that got into management and they'd cut down the labor and say it's always labor's fault. The biggest thing in this country is, oh, yeah, the unions did it. And the unions had nothing to do with it. They had their parts of it, but it was management blaming it on the unions. And what's really shallow is, is the United States people believe whatever the media tells them or the government, and they want to blame it on something because at one time it took a lot of stringent conditions to get into the union, and they had higher wages. And one thing about the world is college education is anti-wage, and the third world enslaving uh, business mindsets of business is anti-wage, except when it comes to their wages. See, something I'm really awakened to is is a a $40 million CEO has what to do with the price of all the products going out. And And that's something that's being brought up. You know, labor actually... When people want to open up to the truth, wages are the are the uh, are the roots of our economy. Just like economies like a tree, you got the roots, the the trunk, and then you got the the branches and the branching out and the leafing out. Well, in, in the economy, wages are the roots because money flows up, and all this all these profits that the corporations talk about, they feed to Wall Street, none of that comes down. Yes, I'm for people making money, but, you know, when you keep starving the roots, it isn't long until the top comes tumbling down. See, what I'm talking about is, see, they used to have child labor and unsafe working conditions and uh, a lot of fatalities on the job site. The... The city center in Las Vegas, oh, I forget when it was, around 2014, 15, somewhere in there, they had a slew of people getting hurt. And the thing about unsafe working conditions is that comes from the top. But, of course, I'm going to say I've done my share of unsafe stuff, too. But what it really is is the end of child labor because and also better working conditions, also higher wages and benefits and insurance and the betterment of people, a betterment of people working lives. And the last, oh, well, ever since about 2003, the working conditions and everything was going kind of sliding downhill for the unions. And a lot of that has to do with union leadership, and that's a whole new thing. But really what it is is 
people become scared. And when you become job scared, you're going to do things to keep your job. And the this I am going to say, when I got in the union in 1991, we had foremen that could run work. And when I got out of the union in 2021 or 22, we had, the foreman we had in the 90s could throw an empty ink pen on the ground, and the foreman we have today aren't even qualified to bend over and pick it up, bend that and take it to the garbage. And that's one thing I want to say. We got we stopped we started using young kids fresh out of apprenticeship, and they started running work, and we let the experience retire, and now we're in the shape we're in. But we're in that shape all over because everybody goes for the dollar. And when the unions first started, it was about quality of life. And as the unions grew older, it became about money. And that's just like the whole world. You know, in the 60s, we kind of had a better life. And I'll tell you what, the 60s and 70s were way better than it is today. And I'm going to say that. But also, we also had, you have to understand the manipulation of the education and the government and the media and all that in order to rise out of it. And something I understand this, we had a saying in the union, if you want to screw it up, put college education in charge. And it did. You look at the world. You know, it used to be you had to have some common sense, but we've kind of educated that out of ourselves and we've become this uh, AI computerized world. And what we're really doing is stealing the innova individual innovation from people. But something I really want people to understand, all third world countries pretty much have three or four correlating kind of uh, correlating uh, ways of life. One is separation of wealth Business, led, business first legislation, corrupt governments, and low wages. And what I really mean by business first, you know, you take away and you stop taking, uh, stop uh, taking care of the working people, pretty soon it goes downhill. And, you know, uh, free trade stole the sovereignty of this country. Free trade was probably one of the worst things that happened to this country because it took all the it took away the workers rights to to strike and it took away the workers rights to to fight with management cuz it's just the way it has to be but you can't have a disagreement with management cuz if you have a disagreement with management today contrary to what all them business coaches say you're going to get run off it's happened to me several times but i i but i'm different i've never had a job i could I didn't like leaving, and I always liked a new one. But today, we do not, we look at the world from the business way of life and the management's way. We never look at it from the people's way. And that's what the labor movement was all about, giving people a voice. But today, we do everything from the uh, management side. And when you when you lack the understanding of the working world, and this is something I'm going to say, all the wisdom for a business to succeed is in the workers. All the knowledge for a business to fail is in the management. Knowledge is, is knowledge lacks get your hands dirty wisdom. And that's where this world is really in a bind now because we're not about get your hands dirty Wisdom, and that's something else that really the last few years, if they had a kid that was just coming out of apprenticeship school and they liked him, they instantly made him a foreman. And there's nothing, there's nothing more uh, illiterate than a than a, fir uh, a first year journeyman. A fifth year apprentice is probably the best electrician on the job. First year journeyman is probably the most useless one on the job. And, you know, everybody's shooting for the foreman's job, 
but I was a journeyman electrician for 36 years. I never really understood how to be a foreman till about the 15th year. 10th year, I started understanding, but the 15th year, I had it open. And see, we let, we let the re experience retire. The thing is, is we never, uh, we never got the wisdom and educate uh, wisdom and insight from the retirees. Them gray-haired guys, they got a lot of a lot of wisdom. But that's the reason the world is sliding. If you look look at the world today, we lack the wisdom of our ancestors, but we got a lot of their survival mode thinking in our life. But today, with the labor movement. That's what today's about, is labor. It's about the people that died, getting us uh, the conditions we have, and it's about understanding labor has got as many rights as all them CEOs and all them corporations. And if you look at the world today, business and education have taken this country just like that, sideways and down. I'm sorry, but we're not, we haven't, risen since the 70s because business and education is what everybody else wants you to know and it's being and it's a manipulation of a fel, uh, secret society that runs the world see people we have to open our eyes to what is going on in ears because people have the wisdom and insight to rise the world up but labor uh is about getting it done. At the end, I'm going to ask two questions. But here's the thing. Labor moves everything. How much, how much does management physically move? See, it's like um, when you're building a building, do them computers move all that heavy equipment? And that is where people open up to and all that heavy equipment and all that big equipment, computers can put it in a spot, but it takes people with wisdom to move it. It takes some journeyman electricians to move it. And not, and what's really fun is they really brought in the safety people, but they bring in these college-educated safety people, and they think they're running the job. But what's really sad is, as we think they are too, we start asking them questions. And that's where the labor is. The labor is just like everything else. We try to do it the easy way rather than the best way and easiest way. You know, something is, and, and the union leadership is just like the leadership of the country. There ain't any. You know, this country has zero leadership, has a lot of aggravated asinine boneheads, but they don't have any leadership. And this is what, this is going to be a uh, uh, a keynote and, and a class. The leader you want to see in your life is the one you look at in the mirror. That is your leader because these other leaders, they're trying to manipulate you to do what they want. And, you know, you can point things out on a job site. But if one of their little heroes or zeros or whatever you want to call them has a different idea and they want to blame you, they're going to win. Because I'm sorry, Mr. Managers and Owners, you guys have some low-quality people working for you. And that's just the way it is. And I'm going to say this right on this because I, I retired. The union has a lot of low-quality leadership people. They're there for their retirement. And they don't, in the last 20 years, eh, about 20, yeah, last 20 years in the union, there was nothing. I needed to, I needed to file a grievance three, twice, and the union run away. Once them members become somebody in the office, they become worthless. And that's just the way I feel. And see, here's the thing. Today, but also what the unions did is they brought you your weekends, benefits, five-day work week, 
And that even the people that hate the unions benefited from the unions because they get they've got a better life because of the unions. You know, it's just like you take the the military. We take all the veterans for granted, but they served a purpose for everybody. And see, we always overlook what it is, and it's you take the Iraq War. All them superstar uh, uh, hosts on a uh, podcast hosts and all them people on the networks that were talking, oh, yeah, we got this. Now that the military's come home, you hear nothing from them. Them are, them are limelighters. Most of the people that are doing them national TV shows are just limelighters. They want the limelight but they don't want to do what it takes. And it was funny. Oh, yeah. And then there's nothing. And see, here's the thing. Our, our thinking has been indoctrinated through a school system of manipulation and from a third world enslaving business schools that think, oh, business first, business first. That's bullshit. I, I'm so sick of that. And Everybody says, get an education, start a business. You can get the education without going to one of them college medicated uh, malarkey places. And, you know, as far as uh, you can get the business knowledge, everything you want off of YouTube. YouTube is a PhD without the knuckleheadedness of college education and the professors. Now, like a doctor and things like that, you have to go, but for like business and entrepreneurship, you can get them five minutes to 20 minutes at a time. And if you look at the world today, we've got all this business going on. Oh, business, business, business. And if you really listen, it sounds like a microphone in a file cabinet because business is a name on a file, on a piece of paper in a file cabinet. Oh, you got to do this and you got to do that. Well, I've been in, around this for three years now, steady. And I'll tell you what, it's not what it's cracked up to be. But what it is, is you got to find people out there. And the thing about it is, they don't have get your hands dirty wisdom. They got knowledge and that's all. And that's where it stops. Knowledge hasn't had the experience it's like you look at the uh undercover boss and they want to go out there and they start going out on the production floor and they are doing all this and the people are good to them until they hit that one guy and he fires them because what looks easy to you there is some in there's some intricate things going on there there's some little movements you don't catch because it's just like when somebody tells you how they did their business, they never, they always omit the tiny little things they did. And if you, and see, the world is programmed into thinking business and education will rise the world. Well, if you go back to 1994 before free trade come in and then witness that and then look at it today, free trade stole the sovereignty of this country. And that was the biggest farce ever laid on the American people. And today, when I read anybody a business coach's stuff, I just leave it because they're too indoctrinated with education and they don't know, they don't have the communication skills to talk to people. College education has very little good communication skills. And the thing about the labor movement back in the 1900s, that was a tough bunch of people that started the movement and liberated people from the onslaught of the corporation. That was, I'm going to be honest with you, people today, we wouldn't be tough enough to do that. But I'm going to show you, tell you this, the world is getting ready to show us how to be, how to do it. And, you know, and as I observed, the union raised wages, stopped child labor, and a five-day work week benefits and health insurance, raising the quality of life for people. But today, 
when we was on the job site, people would, uh, would cut the corners just to keep their jobs. So basically, the workers today, some of them took away what it did. And I'm going to be honest with you. Labor unions have lost their way and fell prey to the world condition of zero leadership. And union leaders dummy the uh, the agreements down so it's easy for them. You know, the union I, I got into, there was nothing like it when I walked out of it. And the, the unions are just like the world. We have zero leadership in this world. It's all greedy, seedy. Uh, if it can make a dollar, you have legislation. If it doesn't make a dollar, it's nothing. And something I really want people to know. Look at being an entrepreneur. Never get to be a business. Business locks up the mind. Entrepreneur flows from here up. And if you look at the world, the separation of wealth creates a corrupt, inept, inept government that we have today. Thinking low wages is the answer to everything is a lie that never dies. Thinking low wages is the answer to everything is a lie that never dies. Yet it stops economic growth. And the world is stuck in, in a third world enslaving mindset. Low wages, business make high profits. Corporate and, the, and uh, elected officials do whatever a corporation or a CEO wants them to do. Now, I have two questions for you. Uh, I'll put these in the uh, in the uh, in the uh, on the bottom of this. What would occur? What will occur if the management, CEOs, business coaches, business gurus, life coaches, hypnotherapists, psychologists, upper management, and all the CEOs went home for thirty days? Would the would would the world still function? Yes, there will be chaos. Yet, but life would go on. Want you to open up to that. Now, what will occur if all the hourly workers, truck drivers, all tradespeople, electricians, plumbers, refinery operators, powerhouse operators, nurses, hospital staffs, and all our hourly workers go home for 30 days? What would happen? The world would be stopped, blocked, because there would be no movement. See, what people don't understand, labor has as much to do with moving the world forward as a CEO, but usually the CEOs and all management is what blocks a country company from moving forward. If you talk to, you ever want to fix, if you ever want to have a company that's in bad shape, talk to the workers. I had a friend and she, I had her on one of my podcasts when she, she straightens up com companies that are going on downhill are going under. She doesn't even talk to the management. She goes out and talks to the workers. And usually about half of the management's gone the next day. Because people under, have the wisdom, books and knowledge, books and computers and education have knowledge with no experience. But Labor Day was here because people stood up to get us better conditions. And for all you high-flying, snooty CEOs and management people, it wasn't for the unions. You would not be where you're at. So you better open your eyes and thank a union and thank a labor, uh, an hourly worker, because they make your life better. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say thank you, and I'm going to say good night.